here we are in year two, episode three of the Simple Success Podcast. Year two? You asked that last week again. What's different? True, and I'm still pleased that... This is financial coaching from a happiness perspective. What was that? Coaching happiness. When you change you, you change everything, and I'll tell you later. Okay, after the trouble with employment contracts. Who do we have here? None other than Mr. Doubting Thomas. Hello, sir. Sir, that's rare coming from you. Did you have a sneak peek at my show notes? That would be cheating. I'm just being formal because, you know, I have class. Speaking of formalities. Yes? Today's podcast will discuss a formality that is necessary for both employer and employee. Oh, what level of service could that be? Employment services, specifically employment contracts. What is that? An employment contract outlines the terms under which one party agrees to provide services for another party. That's a nice egghead way to put it. Okay, how about what you'll do and what you'll get for it? Mm, that's easier, but why complicate things when I already have the job? It's not complicated, DT. It makes things clearer. This contract includes provisions regarding compensation, benefits, and termination procedures in an eligible program. Ah, it's good for the employer. Yes, DT. But it is an important document for both employers and employees. It outlines some basic terms and conditions regarding pay and benefits, but there's so much more to know. More? Like in some academic program? Maybe. In this episode, we'll discuss what you need to know about employment contracts in order to protect yourself and your business. Great! Let's get started. First off, let me say that this topic can be complicated. The law varies by state, and it depends on the individual or company hiring you. There are two broad types of employment contracts, which are verbal versus written contracts. Oh, I like variety. The first thing that you need to understand when it comes to employment contracts is that they are not all created equal. Oh, really? Really. A written agreement is a formal legal document that spells out every detail of the relationship between employer and employee. This type of contract is generally used by larger companies with many employees. What if I work for or own a small business? If you work at a small company or have only a few employees yourself, then you may want to consider using a verbal agreement instead. Easy enough. Verbal agreements are informal conversations where the parties agree upon the terms of their relationship. These discussions often take place over dinner, drinks, or even during casual conversations. Sounds easy and simple. No, not quite. You must make sure that the terms of the verbal agreement are clear and unambiguous before signing anything. Otherwise, you risk losing your rights as an employee. How does that happen? The main difference between these two types of agreements is that a written agreement can be enforced through the courts. On the other hand, a verbal agreement cannot be legally enforced unless it is reduced to writing. Okay. Another important point to keep in mind is that most states require that you disclose any conflicts of interest before entering into a contract. You must also disclose whether you have been convicted of a crime within the last 10 years. I'm going to go ahead and assume that I don't have any criminal convictions. And I'm going to go ahead and take your word for it. However, you should still disclose any past or present drug use, mental health issues, gambling problems, or alcohol abuse. What about an awards program? What? Never mind. Can we do break number one now? Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us, please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month doing level of support, a $4.99 knowing level or a basic intro level of just 99 cents per month. Great place to start, whichever you choose. Thank you so much for helping us do this for you. And to leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. You can also send us an audio file attached to an email if you use just more than your phone for stuff. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there and it's all easy. We're back. And I have to ask, does this disclosure thing apply to everyone? No, only people living in an amazing community. What? 
I don't know. People search on that term, I guess. But for contracts, it depends on who you are working for. For example, if you are employed by a government agency, then you must disclose certain information regardless of how long ago it happened. Oh, let's just focus on employment contracts. Thank you, DT. Finally, make sure that you read over any contract carefully before signing it. Make sure that you understand each provision and that you don't miss anything. Okay, so what do I need to look for? Well, there are three basic things that you should check. Three? Yes. First, make sure that the contract has a date on it. Second, make sure that the signature line is clearly marked. Third, make sure that the language is clear and unambiguous. So which contract is the best for me, verbal or written? Each of these has its pros and cons. Choose wisely. What are the advantages of a verbal contract? Verbal contracts are easy to negotiate. They allow you to get straight to the point without wasting time on unnecessary details. Since they are informal, they do not require a lot of paperwork. Also, since they are oral, they are less expensive. Than written contracts. What about the disadvantages of verbal employment contracts? There are several things that you need to watch out for when negotiating a verbal contract. First, you need to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what you are agreeing to. And second? Second, you need to remember that verbal contracts are not legally binding. Oh, another case of he said, she said. Yeah, maybe, but the third is proof. Proof? Like electronic security? Could be like that. Whatever it takes for you to make certain that you can back up your claims. Anything more? Just one. Finally, you need to be careful when dealing with people who are new to the industry. Oh, so what you're saying is a gentleman's agreement is worthless. Oh, no, not necessarily, but people are just people. You need to protect yourself as a business or an employee. You know, I think I will stick to the written one. Like how breaks are written? Yes, especially second breaks like this one. We know a lot about you already because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to a hard podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno. Sebo. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. So, we're finishing out on this contract thing. For now, DT, you should also know the disadvantages of a written contract. What are those? Should I get out that can of whoop-ass? Well, for now, hold off on that a bit more. One disadvantage is that a written contract takes longer to draft than a verbal one. Written contracts are very detailed and thorough. Also, you may find yourself having to pay more money to hire an attorney to review the document. How much does it cost to hire an attorney? It varies depending on where you live. In some areas, attorneys charge $250 to $500 per hour. Other places may charge $1,000 or even more. Depends on whether they can use any disruptive technologies or not. Wow. They include information like salary, vacation days, health insurance, retirement plans, and even severance packages. They also include specific language that protects the company from liability at the cost of healthier lives. Seriously? No, not that part. I was just seeing if you were following me. So noted. And which one do you recommend? In general, I recommend that you use a written contract if you have more than five employees. But the choice depends on you. I see what you did there. Okay, you'll have to tell me about that. It wouldn't be financial coaching if we told people what to choose, now would it? Right. Coaching is the word. Let's get a little technical here. By technical, do you mean I should put on my nerdy glasses to appear smart? I certainly hope so. Okay, okay, uh, here goes. There are three types of employment contracts, which mostly are components of a contract. I'll, I'll fall for that. What are the three types? Well, as I said, they come in three basic forms. You've got your at-will employment contract, where either side can end it at any time. Uh-huh. And there's the NDA, or non-disclosure agreement, where you get to see stuff but can't talk about it to anybody. Oh, those are always fun. And the best ones, the non-competes, 
where you can't do what you do well for anybody else for a while. Murph. How do I avoid getting fired? The first thing you need to understand is that there is nothing illegal or unethical about being fired. Tips, John. Tips? Okay, one way to ensure that you don't lose your job is to negotiate a good severance package. You should try to get something that includes at least six months worth of salary. Also, make sure that you have access to unemployment benefits. I like that one. Any other tips? Another important factor to keep in mind is that it is best to never resign without giving notice. When you give notice, you give your boss enough time to find another person to replace you. I see. And what about termination clauses? One of the biggest reasons why people get into trouble with their employment contracts is because they fail to include a proper termination clause. Explain that to me in English. Uh, right, okay. A termination clause allows either party to terminate the contract without cause. Without such a clause, the employer could fire you for no reason whatsoever. Sounds like an employment contract is a legal document. Yes, TT, it is legally binding to both parties. Oh, what if the legal language is too complex for me to understand? Good question. Some employment contracts have fine print that only lawyers understand. In this case, you may want to consult a lawyer who specializes in employment law. I'm going to need some help understanding my employment contract. Can you explain what each section means? See what I just said about lawyers. You're right. Next. There's a lot more. For now, just say you like my summary. Okay, I like your summary. Thanks, TT. So, now what do you have to do? I'm sorry? You have to do something in order to have this make sense as part of your investing, right? Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask. Of course you were, and I'm going to answer. Go right ahead. You practice. Until you get good? Yeah. Anything else? Grotius porous scripture. Who is that? That's Daniel. He's just checking us out. Oh, oh okay. A la prochaine. Are you still here? Cool. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King John C. Brandy, Fact Checker Abraham Lincoln, French Consultant Virginia Mitchell, Media Expert Favor O. Bossy E.K., Psychologist Sigmund Freud, Rabbit Hole Advisor Dr. Mark Parrott, Sound Designer Goodly Amo Marconi, Spanish Consultant Cameron J.K. Brandy, Videographer Alfred Hitchcock, Audio Props Lace Paul, Inspiration Napoleon Hill and Earl Nightingale. We also have a website and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio or text message. But of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to actually get links and stuff. I mean, I could read the URLs where you can subscribe, support or leave one of those video or audio messages, but you really don't want me to do that. And those explicit and clickable links are in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on Podmatch, where we consider guests as well as consider guesting on other people's pods. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound, and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams, both on Freesound.org. Paul.